Broadcasting live from WOUB TV in Athens. This is Newswatch. Ohio University and the city of Athens kept a close eye on a student block party over the weekend. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelsey Borsa. And I'm Kaylee Bourgeois. A Meigs County man has pleaded guilty to what authorities are calling sextortion. The U.S. Department of Justice says 28-year-old Charles Estep of Shade admitted to two counts of computer intrusion and one count of extortion. Estep broke into two acquaintances' social media sites and threatened a victim because of comments she had posted online. He also obtained explicit photos of the victim and posted them on the Internet. Estep has not yet been sentenced but could face up to five years in prison and a fine of $250,000. West Virginia has opted to not comply with the federal sex offender registration law because of the cost. The law calls for three states to use a three-tier classification system. Offenders in the highest tier must appear at the appropriate agency at least four times a year to verify their information. Depending on their convictions, other offenders are required to appear once or twice a year. In West Virginia, state police troopers visit sex offenders unannounced at least once a year to verify their information. The Division of Justice and Community Services Director says the state system is as effective as the federal requirements. He says there aren't enough troopers to conduct quarterly visits. 30, 34 other states are also not in compliance. Ohio University researchers will be getting new research opportunities through access to a super fast broadband network. OU is one of the schools in Ohio that will connect to the OAR net network this fall. The partly state-funded project will provide data speeds of up to 100 gigabytes per second. That's 10 times more than what the university has now. IT communications manager Sean O'Malley says OU researchers who need a lot of bandwidth will benefit from the network. For example, uh, someone who's doing perhaps uh, film-related research or multimedia production, they might have some really huge files that they need to be sending back and forth, or they might be doing that where they want to try having things happen at the same time in two different locations. Uh, also, scientific research where you've got really huge data files or you need to be transmitting a lot of material in a very short time frame. State legislators hope this $11 million network will set Ohio ahead of other states in terms of education, research, and creation of jobs. O'Malley adds this will not mean faster internet for OU students. It's not known how an apparent impasse in talks on a power contract might affect efforts to reopen Ravenswood Century Aluminum Plant. The West Virginia Public Service Commission has announced that Century and Appalachian Power Company failed to reach an agreement on a special electric rate. The commission said that if such a rate was agreed upon, it could have more quickly reviewed it for approval. An agreement on retirees' benefits in late February has spurred optimism that the plant could reopen sometime this year. An Ohio University professor has recently received a distinguished statewide award for his writing. We'll have a live interview with him after the break.